the time we have remaining, we have a great uh, blessing to have Clay Johnson here. And, uh, Clay is uh, director of Celebrate Recovery, and he works with uh, Peniel Ministries, and uh, he's a wonderful husband and father to a beautiful family. And so we invite you to come down and share with us what God has done in your heart. Before we get started, let's pray real quick. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you, and we just ask that you speak as only you can, Father. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. I would like to first and foremost thank Pastor Brian and Brian First Baptist for allowing the honor of me speaking today. I would also like to thank you all for your support of Celebrate Recovery. Some of you may be wondering, what is Celebrate Recovery? Well, I am super glad that you asked. <laughs> Celebrate Recovery is a beautiful community of strugglers that have courageously enter this safe and beautiful space to get honest about our pain and the negative ways we may see ourselves, God and others. In the process, we come to accept that some of the habits we may have developed to escape our pain has caused destruction in our life and those close to us. Celebrate Recovery is a biblically balanced approach to help bring sustainable recovery and healing to, other, to our hurts. It guides us toward new healthy truths and life-giving habits as we repair the broken relationships. Now, the next question you're all asking is who is welcome? And I just want to let you know that y'all have some very good questions this morning. <laughs> Everyone is welcome. Maybe you're thinking, Clay, I don't have a problem with drugs and alcohol. Well, statistically, one out of every four people who attend Celebrate Recovery struggles with drugs and alcohol. Just to give you an idea of some of the issues people find freedom from in CR, other than drugs and alcohol, anger, codependency, eating disorders, food issues, love and relationship addiction, physical, sexual, and or emotional abuse, gambling addiction, childhood dysfunction, grief, mental health, basically whatever you're filling the blank is that you're struggling with in life. Our mission at Celebrate Recovery of Fort Hill is to provide a safe environment for those struggling with any of life's hurts, hang-ups, and habits to be able to come and take their mask off. We know that the only way to truly recover from anything life throws at you is Jesus Christ. Our purpose is to reach the unchurched and point them to Jesus first, then as we walk with them, we show them what it looks like to live with sobriety and freedom. Our goal is to work with local churches such as Vianna First Baptist Church in hopes that they will take the next step in finding a church home. We meet every Tuesday at the Cordell First United Methodist Church Activity Center. Dinner's at 545, the service starts at 630. We have small groups directly following the service. Dates to put in your calendar. This Tuesday, October 17th, Pastor Johnny Hunt will be coming to Cordell to our CR, and I want to personally invite each of you there. Um, November 14th, your very own Bayern First Baptist Praise team will be leading worship at Celebrate Recovery. And December 19th, we will have our fourth annual Austin French concert. This is a free concert to all, everyone is invited. Now, on to the next ministry, a new ministry coming to the city of Vianna very soon, Peniel Recovery Ministries Incorporated. God gave me a vision of a men's Christ-centered recovery home a few years back, and, and, and the mission of this recovery home is to provide a free, safe place where men and one day women, Lord willing, can go to be shown the love of Christ as they learn to be sober through biblical teachings and the 12 steps. Our purpose is to love on these individuals and walk with them through their mess, discipling them with the tools to gain long-term sobriety. Our goal is to commission each individual to enter back into society with the tools to stay sober, and most importantly, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Through the power of Jesus Christ, we will see real-life reconciliation, captives set free, chains broken, 
and families reunited in Christ. So why the name Penny? That is the exact question I hope to be asked by each loved one that brings someone through our doors. We find the story of Peniel in Genesis chapter 32. Um, Jacob, like myself, didn't get much right in life. Maybe you know the story. After a life of bad choices, he comes to a place where he has no choice but to wrestle with God. In this meeting with God, he is made to limp and given a new identity. Jesus causes him to never walk the same and gives him a new name. That name would be Israel. We see it in Genesis 32, 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So my hope and prayer for everyone that has to bring their lost and hurting loved one through the doors of Peniel is that this will be a place where they will meet and even wrestle with God. And through this, they will leave with a new identity in Christ and never walking the same, leaving their addiction behind. So far, we have seen God give us a building. He's given us a van. Uh, the zoning flew right through in the city of Vienna. And the land itself, um, 12 acres right off the interstate um, in between the library and defects. As a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had a board meeting after the, the first board meeting we had after the zoning got approved. And we walked into that board meeting because, listen, I just want to go. But now I've come to find out that you have to vote on everything for not for anything. So we vote to approve to buy the land. So the number that the, the, the land would cost is, is more than, you know, some people make in a year. Well, needless to say, I walk out of the board meeting, I don't have anything made it to my truck yet, and the gentleman comes up to me and says, hey, Clay, you go raise money for something else. Me and my wife are going to give you that money. So, God has blessed Penny with a phenomenal board of directors. Hey, as we move forward with construction of the property, there will be many opportunities to get involved. <laughs> this will take the entire community coming together on a continual basis to accomplish so now that we have gotten CR and Penny out of the way, which are two things that I am super passionate about, allow me to tell you about that which I am most passionate about. Today we are going to discuss the good news of the gospel, which um, Pastor Brian had kind of stole from me and, and, and got a Sunday school lesson on, and I was like, well, good night, is he like stalking, stalking my computer? <laughs> By the way, the worship was phenomenal. If that praise and worship doesn't get you fired up, you would might be well. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there listening to the goodness of God, and last night, I didn't get much sleep. I, I was at my dad's house. You know, kind of watching him so that my, my, my stepmother, who's kind of like a mother anyway, she's been my stepmother my whole life, and, and um, I'm there with my dad, and, and, and it's not looking like, you know, it's, it's not looking too good, but, um, you know, in the midst of that, I don't really, you know, you, you have a man who you look at, and you always spend your life trying to, to, to please him. And, 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 and now you see him this stage, and, 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 and cancer's just a horrible thing. And, um, but needless to say, God is good. Amen. I told my dad, I can only assume that, that he has a, a, um, a saving knowledge of, of Christ, and that, that, that you know, when he was getting up and complaining about how it felt, I said, well, pretty soon you have a glorified body. So you might have noticed, you know, even through the midst of all that, as we're praising and worshiping, you know, my hands are just raised in the air. And, 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 you know, I've been asked, why do people raise their hands when they worship? I can only speak for myself. I get really, 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 really excited about Jesus Christ. Amen. Why? Because he delivered me from so much. Listen, I'm really excited about Jesus and all that he has done for me. Some might say that I am a bit extra, and that's okay. 
On July 21st, 2019, Jesus Christ saved me and radically transformed my life. And I have been extra for Jesus Christ ever since. Amen. He delivered me. And now there's a fire burning inside of my soul that I cannot contain. I get so excited when I talk about Jesus, I can't even be still. It's like I just want to run around and holler, hallelujah. Listen, when I got saved, I just wanted to see everybody get saved. Like, hey, Jesus changed me, he changed you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. And I just went around with my Bible, not even know what to do. I had to look at the table of contents. Where do I need, where do I need to go? Man, I, was, I would try to lead a stop sign to Christ. If it was this. I remember the first time at Celebrate Recovery I ever had the honor of leading somebody to Christ. And it was in small groups. We broke into small groups, and a gentleman comes in there, and he says, we're going around. He said, listen, when the guy gave the invitation, I, 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 I raised my hand. I didn't come forward. And I just, I, not that you have to come forward. I'm just, this is out of conversation. He says, and I just, I, I, I want to be saved. And I said, hold on a second. Hold on. I, I, I think I know what to do. And I ran over to the counter. I got a Bible. I see that. I got the table of contents, and I was looking. Okay, okay, page such and such. So I'm looking at Romans. I'm like, somewhere in Romans, it says something about that. And then I, so I look, and I look, and I was like, you just got to hold on a second. And I got to chapter 10, and I went down to, to, to verse 9, and it said, hey, hey, listen. It says right here that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you, you will be saved. I was like, do, do you? And he, he said he did. And I was like, holy cow. I came home that night and I couldn't even go to sleep. Man, I was like, get out of here. I mean, I just was super excited and I wanted more. I wanted to see more and I wanted more. That moment created a passion for seeing souls saved. And I wanted to know more. And I wanted to see more. During my pursuit to learn what salvation was and, and, and how to obtain it, and, 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 and I'm still lost. But anyways, God led me to a verse. I started trying to memorize verses. That's just a daily habit. Like, like I got a whole book open. and I just, anyway, I'm, 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 I'm extra. But it led me to a place in Romans that he quoted that this morning. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. And stop right there, and I'm like, well, hold on a second. Paul says that the gospel has the power to save. And I was like, I need to know what the gospel is. And then, you know, so that got me thinking. What is the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ? So yesterday I took a survey on, on Facebook. Here are some of the answers I received. Jesus, God's word. The Bible, Jesus saves. Hey, these are all really good answers and, 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 and partially really true. The gospel is the good news of what God did for us. So what exactly did God do? Chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians tells a very theological view of what the gospel is. I'll read a few verses out of there, but I encourage you to go back and study the whole chapter. I'll read verses 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive and in which you stand, by which, here we go again, also you are saved. If you hold fast, that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. So here we see in verses 1 and 2, we see again that the gospel saves. In verses 3 and 4, we see that Jesus died for our sins and that he rose from the grave. 
My goal today is to help articulate the gospel to you so that when you leave here today, you may share it with others. And yes, that even goes for all of you in the back. If you have something to write with, jot this down, and we'll elaborate on it. But it says, I, said, I came up with a simple slogan, and I even ran it by the pastor. I was filling my truck up with gas the other morning, and he added one to it. I said, he was, he came, he died, he rose, he lives, and he's coming. I was speaking at a men's brotherhood not too long ago when asked how many people have been saved under the ministry of Celebrate Recovery. And I, to that I just laughed. Because it has absolutely zero to do with me. I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time. I'm not a very good speaker. As a matter of fact, the very first time I spoke at Celebrate Recovery two and a half years ago, I had the whole thing written out. I stood there like this. I read it word for word. I was done in 10 minutes and 53 seconds. I didn't give an invitation. I just walked up and said, Who am I to start with? Oh, it was terrifying. So anyways, I told him, and listen, there was a lot of men in that room that have been going to church for forever. Some of them vegan, some of them, you know, anyways. And um, I said, what I've found here lately is that every time I speak, if I close out with a little gospel presentation that I've memorized, that, that God, if somebody said it means that God would talk to him if he starts his death. So it don't matter how bad of a sermon I give, if you present the gospel at the end, God will draw somebody to him if he sees fit. My job is to simply present the gospel. So I always end with this. I, I basically, in some way, shape, or form, I'll say that, hey, God created a perfect place. He placed Adam and Eve in there. He wanted them to be in relationship with him. Sin in the world separated us from God. But God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. Jesus lived 33 years and willfully, willingly went to the cross and took to that cross with him all the way to the sins, past, present, future, everything that's ever done, everything that's ever going to be done. He took it. It was nailed to that cross. He died. He was buried. Three days he rose from the grave to conquer sin and death so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The way to the sin is death. The gift to God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. There's not a single person in this room that is righteous. No, not one. But we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his love for us and that yet why we were sinners and yet why we make the decisions we do, Christ died for us. How, you might ask? But if you confess with your mouth, Jesus the Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. They said, Clay, I said, that's what saves people. And they said, Clay, you need to write that down and go ahead and teach that. And it blew my mind. It got me to thinking, how many people don't know what the gospel is? It's not that complicated. So today we'll look at it together. He was. Jesus has always been John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Did you know that you and I were created for relationship with God? Leviticus 26 12 says, I will walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. Sin separated us from God, and it separated us from that relationship. As I quoted Romans 3.23, for all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's absolutely nothing we can do in and of ourselves to reconcile this relationship on our own. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace we have been saved through faith and not that of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, least anyone boast. So guys, we know that, 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 he, that, that he was. He was there at the beginning of time relationship. He wanted a relationship with each and every one of us. Sin separated that. So the next point would be, he came. 
Because God loves us so much, he sent Jesus. Y'all know it. John 3, 16. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He died. Jesus willingly took on the weight of all our sins when he died on that old rugged cross. But God demonstrates his love for us. And yet, yeah, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 8. 1 John 2 2. And he himself is the propitiation. Good night, I got that word right. I've been practicing that thing all morning. Woo! For our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Listen, when you get me, you get a very uneducated dude. Like, I, 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 got, I graduated Christmas Academy, and that's, they just wanted me gone. <laughs> you know, they really did. Um, that word propitiation in the Greek is halamos. I think I said that right. It's just Somebody told me once to say it like you mean it. Um, which means atonement or means of appeasing. So he did this to appease God so that we could be back in relationship with him. He rose. Jesus rose from the grave to conquer sin and death so that we might have eternal life with him in heaven. 1 Peter 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He lives. You know the song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because he lives, I'm no longer a homeless drug addict. Because he lives, I have a family. Because he lives, my father at least got to see me get it right before the end of this time. Jesus offers eternal life through a reconciled relationship to all those who repent of their sins by placing faith in Jesus Christ. John 17, 3 says, And this is an eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And last but not least, he's coming. Jesus is coming back soon. Are you living in such a way that is pleasing to him? Are you spreading the gospel to the lost? Remember, it's simple. You can go do your own homework. But he was. He came. He died. He rose. He lives. And he's coming back. Let me ask you a question. What was the score to the Georgia game yesterday? Nobody knows? All right. What is their record so far? What are they ranked? Congratulations! You know what y'all just did? For all of you who think that you cannot share the good news, you just shared the good news of Georgia football. It's not that hard, is it? We share what excites us. Lifeway research shows that 55% of those and might I add before I say this, that, that, that Miss Lisa said in Sunday school that whoever you don't see, invite. Or you invite them. There's a lost world out there that needs to come to church. There's a lot lost world out there that needs to be presented the gospel. But while you're out there inviting them, share the love of Christ with them. Lifeway research shows that 55% of those who attend church at least once a month say that they have never 
shared, no, that they have not shared, excuse me, not shared with someone how to become a Christian in the past six months. One of the main reasons, and this ties into the Sunday School lesson, that we fail to share our faith, we fail to share the gospel with others, is because it is awkward. So one day, when we make it to heaven, Paul's going to come running up to us. Hey, man! Hey! Wasn't it so exciting sharing the good news of the gospel with all the lost? So that will be like, um... Wait a minute! They put you in jail, right? Uh, what, did they torture you? It must have been the stops, right? The things that they put your feet in. Gave you cramps. Random things hurt. Um, not exactly. Well, tell me what it is. What was it that stopped you from sharing the gospel? Well, Paul, to be honest with you, it was a little bit awkward. Yeah. I was scared I would make someone or myself uncomfortable. So I close out this morning with an encouraging challenge. I challenge you, buying a first Baptist, to tell the world about Jesus. When it is time for you to lay crowns at the feet of Jesus, Will we have any delay to stay? Ask yourself that. Or will you be like Paul to where it's kind of like, beep, beep, beep. Excuse me, y'all, the dump truck's got to get through. The good news of the gospel has the power to change lives. I stand before you a man that has broken all ten of the commandments. I've been addicted to everything on this earth. I've been homeless. I've been arrested more times than I can even remember. I've been in prison. I am the worst of sinners. To steal a quote from a song, at the end of the day, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody to save my soul. Will you join me? I leave you with the gospel. Why? Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God and salvation for all those who believe. The gospel is this. God created a perfect place. He placed us there. He wanted to be in a relationship with us. But sin separated us from God. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus Christ to live on this earth. 33 years, he willingly went to that cross with the weight of all our sins. He died, buried. Three days later, he rose from the grave and time for sin and death. So that whosoever will believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. There's not a single person in here that are righteous, not even Pastor Ryan. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his love for us in the end while we were sinners. Christ died. How in my eyes. We confess with our mouth to the Lord, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and shall be saved. It's the gospel. Would you bow your hands, please? sit there right now in this moment. If God's calling you home, if you 
you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. Only you know what the Holy Spirit is telling you. Hey, if that's you, I would like to pray for you. If, if you've never made that profession of faith, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, would you raise your hand so that I can pray for you? Anyone at all? We're going to pray and we're going to close out. Dear Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the gospel. Paul says, woe is me. I don't preach the gospel. Father, we love you and we thank you for it. Pray for each and every one here that they would go amongst this place and spread the gospel everywhere they go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.